Greetings, I'm Shad, and I love swords. I don't love them in, you know, the way that a man loves a woman, or how a father loves a son. Could I love swords how a father loves... Hmm, things are getting a little bit weird now. I don't love swords. I hate them. I fart in their general direction. I'm sorry, I was just trying to do a joke. Can you forgive me, please? We're made up. Thanks. <clears throat> I would say get a room, but technically I have one right here. But yes, the sword is my favourite weapon among all other weapons, and I do go into some reasons why that is the case in my video, why swords are awesome. But I wanted to talk about another kind of thing as to why swords are so cool. Because in the large scheme of things, and I do hold this opinion, and I have said it a few times, I don't think the sword is the ultimate weapon, and it is was, in a general sense, wasn't used as the first choice as a primary battlefield weapon. And when I say that, I'm kind of referring to the high medieval period and later, in my own imperfect analysis when I look at these things in my study. It's not to say the sword wasn't used on a battlefield, uh, in a, like, as in, according to my understanding, though it wasn't picked as the primary battlefield weapon, it was almost always picked as the backup battlefield weapon. And so once you have your primary one, whether, whatever that is, bill hook, pole axe, war or not, even war hammers and other things like that, and halberds, longbow, crossbow, all these weapons that, you know, are a really good pick for your main weapon when you're getting into battle and stuff like that, you know, spear, lance, pike, whatever. Um, the sword, like, all these primary weapons, there's a lot of kind of variance as to which ones are picked and whatnot, and you can't really say that there was one picked more than all others. But when it comes to the secondary weapon, the backup, when you're in a situation where your first one doesn't really work as well as it would, or well as it did anymore, it's out of the context or the realm in which it was used, or you simply lose your weapon, well, this was the second pick in a very large, you know, majority. This is why we like to call the sword a sidearm, because that's what it really was. It was a sidearm. Of, it is the sidearm of the medieval period. So I don't think anyone really calls the sword the ultimate battlefield weapon. No. And in my understanding, it wasn't really the first pick when you come to the high medieval period. Because, of course, in the Viking period, yeah, if you were rich enough to get your hands on a Viking era sword, yeah, you would definitely use it, right? But the battlefield evolved, technology evolved, things changed to the point, as I understand it, no, the sword wasn't the first pick. But everyone still carried it. Now, that's a good question. Why do people still carry a sword? And in my video, Why Swords Are Awesome, I talk about that, you know, it's really convenient to hang at your hip, and that's a very uh, significant point to consider. But I have another point to consider in regards to why the sword was such effect an effective uh, secondary weapon. And outside of the battlefield, why it's such a, a wonderful pick as a uh, defensive weapon for, in terms for self-defense? Well, the sword is like the first pick in so many examples in history. So again, what is this thought I'm having as to why this is the case? Well, the answer is simply versatility. Now you might think, well that's kind of obvious, but when I consider it, I like, you look at the sword, right, and you look at, okay, it will thrust, it will cut, and it will hack. But is it the best weapon at thrusting? If you were to just, instead of just considering, you know, which sword is better at thrusting than others, considering all weapons all together, is the sword the best weapon to thr at to to thrust with. And honestly, no, the spear is far more effective in the thrust than the sword will ever be. Okay, what about the hack slash cut? Cut, cut, cut. Oh, my hat! I got on my hat! Ta-da! No, the sword is not the best weapon to cut with. The axe is far, far greater at cutting things than the sword. I mean, seriously, try and chop down a tree with a sword. Good luck. I'm sure you could do it, you know, after a very long period of time, but there's a reason why we use axes to chop down trees. I know not really anymore. Chainsaws are better than the axe. Shut up! So no, the sword is not as good as the spear in the thrust, and it's not as good as the axe in the cut. But what about this? Is the sword better at cutting than the spear? And is the sword better at thrusting than the axe? And the answer is absolutely. And the other question is, can the sword still thrust even though it can't thrust as well as the spear? And can the sword still cut effectively even though it can't 
cut as effectively as the axe? And the answer is absolutely. It can still do those things to a very useful level of effect. And so that makes the sword so much more versatile than the spear or axe could ever be. And like I said, just because it can't thrust as well as a spear, it doesn't mean that it can't thrust really, really well. It can. And so just in considering those qualities, I feel that makes the sword you know, a superior weapon. But if you really wanted, if the thrust became really important in the context of whatever battle you were in, you would use a spear. But if you weren't, if you didn't know that you might need to thrust or to cut or whatever, if you couldn't really determine in what way in or in what type of combat you were going to be in in the future, well, to just kind of cover all bases to a very acceptable and adequate level, the sword covers those bases really nicely. And so, unlike a battlefield where you generally know what role you're going to feel, fill in a battle, you're given orders, you're going to be doing this, this and that, so you kind of know what role you're going to fill like an archer, you could kind of safely assume he's going to use arrows, bows. But when you go outside of a battlefield where you can't predict in what type of combat you're going to be in, you're going to need a weapon that can really cover all those bases, like I said. And so what weapon would you pick for self-defense outside of a battlefield? It's the sword. Just, just letting you know. And so yes, another reason why the sword is awesome, and that is because, in my opinion, I do believe it to be the, the one of the most convenient plus versatile weapons ever made. So when you add that convenience to being able to carry it around with you everywhere and its incredible vers you know, versatility because it's good against people who are not wearing armor, it's still effective against people who are wearing armor. It's not the best but it's really still very useful and effective and it is just, yeah, in my opinion, the most versatile melee weapon ever made in history. And so, yes, the sword is awesome. I love the sword. And not in that way, even though I was really stupid to begin with to just go with a joke. I don't love swords that way. I'm, I'm not that weird. Okay, I am weird, just not in that... <sighs> See you later. You are like the rose, so beautiful to behold, but dangerous to touch. No! Yes! Ah! You said you'd never do that again! We've been through this before! That's it! I'm sleeping on the couch! No, no. I don't care if you're sorry. You can talk to the hand. Touché.